Good day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Dwayne Matz and welcome along to another Primetime Devo. We're continuing going through the book of 1 Timothy. We're in chapter 3, verse 2, which reads, A bishop, that is a pastor, then must be blameless and the husband of one wife. And we've been talking about this qualification of the husband of one wife and how it relates to the sin of adultery as for, you know, those who would seek to serve as pastors. Now, again, a line has been drawn in the sand. And those who have converted to Christianity and therefore have left the culture of sexual promiscuity, they must leave that lifestyle behind. The line in the sand is this, and it's for pastors and all followers of Christ. No more adultery or unchaste sexual behavior for followers of Christ. But here's the problem. Adultery, by biblical definitions, shows up in many different forms. Unfaithfulness to one's spouse being the most obvious, but then there's the not-so-obvious admonition from Jesus in Matthew 5.28, which addresses the matter of pornography, when he says, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, the biblical sin of adultery is also linked to divorce and remarriage. Jesus says in Mark 10, 11, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And in Luke 16, 18, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. And then in Romans 7, 3, we read, So then, if while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. Well, no wonder the marriage vow typically states, till death do us part. And a wonder, Jesus said in Mark 10, 9, therefore what God has joined together, let not man separate. But what are we to do with divorce so rampant in the church? Well, first of all, understand this. Many times divorces are obtained due to past or present cultural influence and ignorance of what the Bible has to say about it, much as the cases involved in the days of Timothy and Paul. What did the people in those churches do? Well, they likely confessed the errors of their ways, confessed their sin, and then drew that line in the sand and said, no more adultery or unchaste sexual behavior for followers of Christ. So how does this matter of divorce and remarriage apply to modern-day pastors? You know, I think that's a question that needs to be prayerfully addressed and answered by the congregation who is calling the pastoral candidate to serve them. As in all things, search the scriptures and pray, and then follow the course of action as indicated by the Holy Spirit. Well, that's all the time we have for today. God bless you. Thank you much for listening. Remember, Jesus loves you. Tell your face about it.